Um, all right, I'm going to ask that question one more time with a show of hands. Anybody have no idea who I am? Like, never. Cool. We have one person. All right. Well, <clears throat> that's two people. All right, that's good. Well, that's good to know because there's a lot of information on YouTube. So I'm not going to go into my backstory about my awakening and how I came into this place. Just know that not unlike all of you that are sitting in these chairs today at this event, I have had my own spiritual awakening, and it was in the midst of a struggle with chronic pain. Uh, began meditating for no spiritual purpose whatsoever other than to reduce my pain levels and ended up awakening to this amazing communication with these loving beings and guides that took me on a journey that rocked my world and forever changed my life. So who I stand here today as in these shoes is not even remotely close <laughs> to who I was in my last nine-year cycle, if you were here watching Ethan's numerology talk. Um, lived a very conventional mainstream life, corporate world, got a bachelor's degree in marketing, journalism, PR, um, then left the briefcase and held the diaper bag for a long time, did the stay-at-home mom bit, was the PTA vice president, um, was the social chair for the neighborhood and the church and all that stuff. And, and it took me a number of very small steps to make really huge changes in my life. And now I'm so excited about my life and what I do. It's like I get to wake up every morning and talk to extraterrestrials. I know who does not want to do that in their life, right? And that's, that was the issue when I started to come out to my family because I was raised Catholic. Um, nobody in my family was in this conversation. I had no mentors in my life, no parents um, or otherwise to look to. And, you know, my family still doesn't really get me today. They're not here at the expo. They still love me, and I see them quite often. Um, but I can't have this conversation with them. And so in order for me to really step into this, this role in the public, that thinking about how fun this is really going to be started to take over, right? Because when you get that inherent question, what do you do for a living? And you spin that into something really fun, like talk to extraterrestrials. It's really fun to watch the expression on people's faces. So it took me a long time to get there. But anyway, those of you who have been following my channeling on YouTube, I usually use this time to tell a little bit about my story. But just know if you aren't familiar with me, I channel a variety of beings, um, Pleiadians, Arcturians, uh, a Council of Light, which is a 12th dimensional collective, Archangels, uh, Ra, Segmet, so many others. Um, and so what you're going to see today is a mix. Um, what I want to do first is I do a little conscious channeling. So I catch everybody up on where we are here in this time on the planet, what we've been transitioning through, because that's what I was told I'm here to do. When I first started opening up to this channeling communication, I was told I was here with a purpose, with a mission, and that was to help light workers transition through a very difficult time on this planet. And not unlike Mark Romero, I was not cool with that at all. I argued with my guides for a really long time. I was like, that sounds great. Not at all what I'm here to do. But I get it now, and I understand where we're at and why. And so I want to spend some time you know, talking about that. And then, like Ethan said, we'll do the live channeling portion. And so my intention is always for the highest and best of everyone who's here, as well as out there, because we film today and all of my channelings go up on YouTube. So you can watch them to your heart's content. Um, and we'll get a download. We'll get a message about the most relevant thing we need to know right now, and then we'll take questions, okay? So just to back up, um, we know we're in the midst of a major grid shift. And I don't know how many of you in this room have been feeling that lately, so much, a lot of turbulence, a lot of movement, a lot of change. And then sometimes we're like screeching to this halt where nothing's going on at all. And we're looking around us going, what's going to happen next? I don't know where to go and what to do. And, and what I believe this is, is what a lot of channels and teachers have been talking about in the movement, the event. But I talk about the event quite differently than what a lot of others have been uh, describing it as, because I don't believe it's one event. Okay, I don't believe that we're going to wake up tomorrow and we're going to be ascended and there's going to be two Earths and there's going to be one over here and one over there. And if, if you didn't make it, sorry for you. 
I think this is a progressional time where we're walking through little steps and we're receiving planetary assistance based on where we are to move into a new dimension. And that's coming with a lot of different aspects of our reality having to change. Because what we sometimes believe is that it's all happening to us. And one of the most profound messages or realizations that I've gotten in my channeling is that we are a part of it. It's not happening to us, it is responding to us. <clears throat> okay, so, so where we're at in our consciousness, um, how we walk in those shoes and the decisions that we make on a daily basis contribute to how these planetary alignments in this event is unfolding. So there's no specific timeline for this. There's no, you know, I get asked all the time, when is the event going to happen? When's it going to be done? When is the fifth dimension going to be here? And what the guides will say, and it's kind of funny because they're like, we don't time. <laughs> there's no time. <laughs> So they can't even answer that question. They say, well, if you want us to give you time, we could give you an estimate on how we think you're vibrating as a collective right now and matching potentials in your field. And so what I've come to realize is how powerful we are as collective creators. And it starts in our singular reality. So if you're sitting in this seat right now and you think you're not an important contributor of what's taking place on the planet, you are so wrong. It all starts in the microcosm of the macrocosm, which is your own life. So what's been happening with us as we've been awakening, and you know, for me, it was 2012 was when it all hit. And I think a lot of people you know, around that time period were starting to go through some things. We have an opportunity when these awakenings come. So we're coded when, we're, when we arrive here. We have contractual agreements that I'm gonna talk about in length in a moment. We have collective decisions. We have intentions that we come with. And I don't think they're so specific as we're gonna meet this one person at this time and do this one thing. I think it's an overall broad scope or view of something we wanna to contribute to this human experience. And there are many opportunities for us to design and create that along the way. So we live at the level of our frequency. And I want to give a perfect example of this. If you were just here in the room when Ethan was giving his talk, um, Jaylene, for example, that he was using um, in his branding example, she comes into this life with this desire to research DNA, genetics, ends up in the field, conventional genetics and DNA, and lives that life for a while. And then there's a bump in the road. Something happens. There's new information. She looks the other way. And now she's taking who she was, and she's upgrading it into a new timeline. Well, this is how we all live. We come with these intentions. We come with these abilities. We come predisposed to work within our Akashic history, to create something through our free will. That free will is the degree to which you want to tap into your highest potential. So some of us have been playing really small. You know, we've been playing, we've had the blinders on, we've been playing in the third dimension with a lot of limited information. We haven't been able to tap into this Akashic field around us. And that's not right or wrong. It, just is what it is. But now we have more information. And once you become awakened, you have a choice. You could take that path or you can stay where you are. Again, not right or wrong. But often when we take that path, we find ourselves in a higher dimensional expression of who we've been before. Not unlike what's happening on the planet. Okay, so this is exactly what this event is all about. It's about us taking the things that we've created and upgrading them into a higher frequency. So it's not necessarily that we're replacing things on the planet, but we're transitioning things on the planet. And this is exactly what's happening in our own lives. So I know that a lot of you who follow my work are familiar with the grid shift and the grids. If you're not, grids are just a really fancy word for the way information flows. And so when we were creating in this blinder perception. We created a grid system. We were flowing information between our planet, other planets, 
other people in a very slow speed, a very physically focused speed. Well, as we ascended ourselves and as our consciousness began to raise, we created a new grid system. And that grid system flows far faster between our planet and other star systems and planets, between us and other humans, between us and our cosmic families than it ever has before. And this is what we're feeling. So what the guides say, and they say it so beautifully, is that when we get really uncomfortable in our lives, it's because we've already created a new timeline that's vibrating and non-physical, and we already know that we're meant to be that person. And that uncomfortable is us resisting the knowing of something we can't see. Breathe on that for a minute. Like, that's huge. If we're uncomfortable in where we, at, where we are, sometimes we get stuck because we think, well, it could be worse out there. If I make this decision, things could fall apart. Right? We've been trained into this kind of mind play that we need to stay safe and stay in our comfort zone. And this transition on the planet right now is not at all about being in your comfort zone. It's about trusting that the universe has got your back and that uncomfortable is calling for more. So there's been a lot of new themes coming into my channeling based on this information. Before I get into those themes, I just want to talk a little bit technically about what's happening. Um, we're in the midst of a pole shift, a pole reversal. And there's been a lot of news coming up about this in physical, I've seen lately with earthquakes, We've had like the most earthquakes ever on the planet at one time, right? This is what's happening. This is the earth adjusting to what's going on within her vibrationally, but we are also connected to that. So I've channeled a lot of information about this. We are electromagnetic beings plugged into the earth. When we have something like the poles, which are electromagnetic transducers for information, shifting positions, things inside of us go a little haywire. So I've noticed a lot of people are having hormonal difficulties, um, exhaustion, thyroid, adrenal kinds of things, and this is a stress response to what's going on within the planet. So if you're one of those who've been to the doctor and they're like, your blood work looks fine, looks good, no problem. This is what you're feeling, it's the energy, right? It's the energy. Now, what's interesting about this is that we've had a lot of planetary alignments, if many of you are familiar recently, that have been taking us back in time through the chaos of our past experiences. We've had a lot of retrogrades, okay? And those retrogrades are here to help us walk solidly in those shoes of that master that we are. So I don't like to, word, like to word, use the word test, okay? But we're kind, we've kind of been tested lately, I think with a lot of things coming up, back up to the surface, with us having to deal with physical health issues and how are we gonna think about that this time? How are we gonna deal with that relationship that came back again? How are we gonna deal with our own limiting thoughts and beliefs? And so here we are in the midst of a pull shift with some instable hormonal responses having to deal with retrogrades that are taking us into some tests. I mean, it's been a pretty big deal. It's interesting, though, that we scheduled this expo at the time that we did, because even going back into 2017, what the guides on our channel were saying was that this was going to be a really challenging time for us through fall, and that the final quarter or the final end of 2018 was going to feel a little bit different. And I believe that 2018, 2019, for the most part, is the crux of the event. I think it's the most dramatic part of our integration. And as we get into the 2020s, we're gonna see some big changes in the collective. But this time on the planet, 2018, 2019, is really about us. It's about starting here. It's that microcosm preparing for that macrocosmic event that we're gonna see unfold. So it's really good right now to be in your life to be in your timeline, to be in your body, and to be questioning and applying these concepts. So I wanna bring one of those concepts to the surface that has been showing up in my own life, and I know the lives of many others and my clients, and that has been reptilian consciousness, archons. What are we gonna do about all of this stuff on the planet? And a lot of my channeling talks about reptilians, and I believe that I'm here to help change that situation. 
Um, I don't often spend a lot of time talking about them and what's going on because I don't like to evoke fear in people and I don't think it needs to be a fearful topic. But nonetheless, in the last several months, it's been a common theme in my life and it's been mirroring itself in all of my clients and people around me. To the point where I had to do some serious soul searching myself and go deep into some channeling to understand how do we personally deal with reptilian and arconic energies? So I got some really interesting information that I wanna share with you. And it really does mirror this theme of what we're going through individually. So I don't wanna get into a lot of the history, but just know that we do have reptilians that are here on this earth. There is a consciousness that is here. There are also varying levels of physical and hybridized human reptilian genetics. Some of those are walking around as enlightened healers on this planet, okay? So, so just like humans, we have benevolent and malevolent, malevolent humans, right? And we're really quick to judge specific races, like those reptilians, they're all bad. But how can that possibly be true? I mean, any race has ascended multiple timelines, right? So we do have a variety of reptilians that are, I believe, in those higher dimensions and assisting us, and I've actually communicated with many of them in downloading my book. So what happened to them, uh, Alpha Centauri, there was a war that took place. Um, it involved the Greys, and this war left them in a difficult position because the Greys were inhabiting this star system, and the Greys were more of a physical entity they're very focused in physical, they carry out physical types of assignments, even though they might shape shift and travel throughout the universe, they're more of a physically based structure. And this changed the vibration of Alpha Centauri to the point that it really left the reptilians in a disadvantageous position. It's not unlike if we had a variety of extraterrestrials come here to the planet in physical form and start hybridizing with us. Frequencies would change, energies would change. We'd have to adjust to that. It would probably be a pretty big deal. Well, it was a big deal for them. So there are many councils that exist in the multigalactic universe, and these councils are formed for a variety of purposes based on what's going on. And we know we, our own government goes through changes and adopts you know, councils and groups to oversee certain things that they think are important. And there was a council uh, that was set up to oversee these planetary shifts when beings were inhabiting spaces and coming together and making sure that universal law was followed. And the reptilians requested to come to Earth because they saw that Earth was a physically focused planet yet had the right frequency for them to ensure that their race would continue on because they were not able to create any longer or procreate any longer in the way that they had before. There's a whole other war that took place in the midst of this that I'm not going to get into. I've downloaded like sheets of stuff that I've typed up and will probably put out at some point. But none of that really matters. What matters is the reptilians found themselves here. And as they did, their intentions weren't necessarily to skew our timelines. They were under the watch of this council, and this council was overseeing what they were here interacting with. And one of the most prominent goals that this council set for them was to hybridize with humans such that their race and our race could continue to expand in the highest way possible. Well, it didn't go so well. And what I believe is a lot of these physical reptilians are still here on this earth, but I don't think that they're doing so well either. Um, I believe that we don't see them because they're beneath the earth in caves. They don't do well in sunlight. As a matter of fact, the sun is very detrimental to them. Um, but what happened is hybridized forms of physical reptilians began to evolve and took on their energy. So these hybridized reptilians are the ones that often cause the most problem here. So to some degree, what we have to realize is that when these reptilians came to Earth, they became a part of our human collective. They're here, their energy's here. We have commingled our energy as a human race, and you guys are all going, no, but it's true. So how are we gonna clean this mess up? It's not gonna be by bringing these reptilians to justice. They have to ascend right along with us. 
and that ascension process is taking us to a higher level. So I mentioned we have contracts when we come as a soul being. These contracts are, are actually beneficial to us. And some of you may know that you have contracts with specific races. You know, I've heard people say, I have a contract with the Pleiadians. I'm here to do this specific, you know, healing modality, and they're working with me, and I know of that contract, and they show up for me. And that's a really positive or beneficial expression of a soul contract. The word contract is a little confusing because we think of it in our human minds as something that's really negative. You know, we think about contracts and attorneys and government and, you know, things go awry. That's not at all what this contract is all about. So contracts are all about soul fragmentation, okay? So we're here in these, soul, these souls in these singular bodies made up of fragments of light. We came from many into this one little, like we think, human container to do big things. And these contracts make up our fragments, okay? So when we go, we go back to that one place, when we decide that we're done in this timeline, in this body, and we reintegrate, we refragment into other souls. So think of it this way. You're here learning so much, doing so many amazing things that you wanted to go back into the one, into the light, and say, take some of that knowledge and send it here, and here, and here, and here, and oh, you can take this, and that, and this, and that. This is what contracts are about, okay? So what's a reptilian contract or attachment? It's reptilians in a bad situation trying to do something here on this planet that really can't be done. It's something that is a one collective energetic expression but nonetheless, they're trying to tap into that fragmentation or that soul energy to procreate through it. So we get really afraid when somebody tells us we have a reptilian attachment or a contract, we're like, holy crap, I need somebody to get this off of me, right? But this is what the guides told me, is in order for that contract to be valid, not unlike an earthbound contract, there has to be agreement. So two people have to sign a contract for it to be valid. So if that reptilian's putting a contract on your soul and you didn't sign on, but you accept that that's already been done, you're energetically agreeing to something that you really don't want to agree to. It's a vibrational thing, right? I'm not signing our name on the dotted line. It's a match of vibration because when we were in that collective one space, we were like, yes, I'll take that fragment and this fragment and this fragment and the Akash gives me this and I want to send this to the earth. So you agreed to that because you were excited. You were matching it all over the place. And that's what's going to happen when you transition out of this body and move into another. You know, there are many humans on this planet that carry fragments of Mary Magdalene and Jesus and ascended masters and Pleiadians. Think about that. If you could view into your soul fragments right now and pick them apart and go, oh my gosh, this is amazing, right? This is a positive thing, okay? But in order for a reptilian contract to be agreed to, this is what they require. Death of the soul in a human body. Not death of the human body and the soul, but death of the soul in a human body. How many people do we know? that are walking around, right, dead in a human body. And what does that require? It requires us to step away from our mastery. Pretty big, to the point where we believe that everything outside of us is dictating our creative energy. And this is how we get stuck. So we'll often start as healers, and I've seen this in the conscious community, to point fingers at people. Well, that person's got reptilians, and that person gave me a reptilian, and now I have a contract because this person gave me this contract. Well, where does that end? And does it end? And is that taking us back to a place that's just separating us and weakening us to agree to these reptilian contracts through our frequency? Because now we're not only in fear of something that we think we have, but now we're protecting ourselves from all other humans that we think are causing the problem. And we may be as ascended as Master Jesus, but 
that interaction with our own life and our own timeline is just making the problem worse, right? So death of the soul. Fear, not moving forward in your life, thinking that everything outside of you is causing the problem, and taking control, changing that whole perspective. You don't have to worry about any of this stuff, right? When you become that master walking in those shoes, it doesn't matter what you bump into in the field. It doesn't matter if the reptilians are here or not here. Because we're changing that. That's what this, is event is, it's, this event is all about. Okay? It's not just about reptilians. It's about the whole thing. But I'm saying put that in the context of this energy we just walked through. Relationships, fear, reviewing the past. Oh, my gosh, I'm not good enough. All of these things. In some way, it makes me think that a lot of this comes up not only as a test, but to really strengthen our faith in our abilities, and in our own energy. Because that's really all we have, right? So what do healers do? We have a lot of healers on this planet, like the one we were introduced to Friday night, that clear entities, clear reptilians. They're giving you an opportunity in that moment. So if you have some negative energy around you, some attachments, some contracts, and they're clearing them, you now have an opportunity to live again in your body, in your soul vibration, to step onto a new timeline. Because in the next minute, God forbid, it doesn't matter if you've got crosses on or, you know, you're carrying the, the best crystal ever, we're all here as a one collective. We're stepping through dark and light in every moment. So that clearing is only as good as you're going to take that opportunity to change your perception. Because sometimes we find ourselves in a place of darkness, right? Sometimes things build up on us, and we need healers like that to give us that moment of clarity. But if we don't take it, if we don't choose to take it and see our power in that moment of clarity, and we're just in fear of the next step we take, we're just re rerunning a pattern or a cycle that our whole human collective has been running through time. Like, how much are we going to run? How much are we going to hide? How much are we going to be in fear? How much are we going to separate ourselves from others? How much are we going to judge? How is that helping us? So, in addition to that, what I wanted to share is I started to download this beautiful, beautiful work through Divine Mother. And the light side of this is that we are in these physical bodies with every single decision we make and every single response to our human reality, master creators. And a lot of times we get stuck in all of this spiritual stuff, processes, activations, when really what Divine Mother has been offering through me is that we are the master in every response we make to our physical reality. Think about that for a minute, how powerful that is. We can project through time and have a manifestation process, but if we just meet people where they are and we respond to them in the present moment with that higher consciousness or that higher perception, we tune our frequency to that higher timeline so quickly and easily. It doesn't have to be hard. So this whole perception that we have been affected by reptilians and the planet is going to hell in a handbasket. Is it real? Is it something that we are perpetuating? How do we meet that perception every day in our own lives? That becomes the key, I believe, to how all of this is going to change. So timeline energy has really been a focus. And we have a lot of it going on right now. <laughs> so um, a lot of us are on what I call, and if you've done sessions with me, it's come up a lot, timeline convergence. And I want to bring that up as just a final theme, and then we'll get into the channeling. Timeline convergence is actually a really cool and positive thing that I think is happening really quickly right now. It means that we're bringing up a lot of potentials in our field 
from not only our history on the Earth, but our multi-galactic history. So we might have done things as a Pleiadian, as an Arcturian, that all of a sudden are presenting themselves as opportunities. Um, we might want to go that direction because there's some knowledge there or something we want to understand. These fragments of our soul, they show up kind of in our aura from past lives, and we want to grab onto them, but sometimes we get really confused. So if you're feeling that right now, like there's so many directions I could go, and I, got, I have to understand this, and I have to understand that first, Know that that's what you're feeling. There's a lot of timeline energy converging. And as you step into the thing that excites you the most, it carries you beyond that timeline convergence to take all of the pieces together and make logical sense. Because lack of clarity is a falsehood. We never really have lack of clarity. We only are just seeing into a hologram that's so big that we become overwhelmed in these human bodies. And that's where we're heading. That's a, that's a beauty of this transition that I just want to talk about is that hologram is becoming almost palpable, right? It's like it's, it's in our face. We can see it. We can see how we're the master of it. I've had very quick thoughts and manifested things in the next moment lately, a lot. And you have to be careful of that energy, right? The way you respond to everything is going to meet you at that response. And so play with that as we go through this time. I think that when we move through the fall, it's going to be a fun time to play with that. Because if you're in the right space, you're really going to start moving pretty fast. All right. Any quick questions about any of that before I channel? Okay. All right. So we're going to do a trans-channeling experience. Uh, I know you guys are all familiar with that. Um, you're a part of this. So your energy is co-creating with me and the beings and the guides and everyone who is here um, a message. I don't know what that's going to be today. I actually have no clue what that's going to be today. Sometimes I know uh, ahead of time. So it'll be a surprise for me too. Um, and then once the general message comes through, we'll take questions. So feel free to line up at the mic um, and we'll take those questions one at a time. All right. Sometimes we get processes and activations if we do. Um, the guys always tell you how to sit, how to breathe. All right. All right, so I said I didn't know, but I kind of knew we were going to work with Segment today. <laughs> so, all right. Readings and blessings. I am Segment, and there are many who enter this space who are divine teachers and wisdom keepers for the galactic universe. We call ourselves this not in an egoic sense, but, but that we are here with great knowledge. And our access of the Akashic field is coming together in a one unity to offer to you not only the words that are divinely offered through this channel, but become a frequency in your field that is able to be selected by you based on your vibrational match of that information. It is my distinct pleasure to bring through an analogy of what we believe is taking place on your planet. This analogy comes from, through time, the experiences of many other beings who have also walked this planet as gods and goddesses. They have, in their own physical shoes, manifested into form in order to assist humans in recapturing their Akashic past. We believe you to be the gods in those physical shoes, the goddesses, the beings that you are in this moment, accessing that Akashic knowledge. And the reason that we offer this message today is that you have undergone a progression of planetary energies that have, in many ways, been the catalyst for an opening of your higher self field. We wish to explain the higher self field to you as a vibrational component of your structure that is aligned to divine source. It is one in nature with all things that match its likeness. Becoming acquainted with this higher self frequency or energetic 
is, is not unlike the automatics of machinery. There are some on your planet who may be trained in an ability to use a human machine. And as they become trained and practice the use of that human machinery, it becomes second nature to them. And often, they're operating the machinery without a thought process around how to do it. It is almost as if their consciousness becomes one with the machinery. And this is what we see taking place within many of you right now. But this operating part of your structure, this collective unity of information, comes not without integration. And we see that some of you may be struggling with your ability to integrate such a high-frequency field into your day-to-day -day physical awareness. This energy in humans, the higher self, is present within many other beings and many other structures throughout the galactic universe. When you imagine a higher dimensional race of beings functioning as a one collective, that one collective is not unlike your own higher self. So as you walk your physical journey with this higher self frequency, you're often beginning to question the actions of the mind in real time because the mind has been the overriding component of your structure. You have been trained into a vibration that has taught you that the mind is the all-being, all-knowing entity or energy of your creative selves. So when an idea is born, it becomes filtered through the mind such that the idea may be created. That is not necessarily wrong, but we wish to take you back to the analogy of the machinery. That when the mind becomes so adept at capturing an idea, that it is able to let go of that idea flowing with it through energetic ability. It is not that the mind is forcing this idea into creative relevance in your physical field, but that idea becomes matched through a collective Akashic energy that takes it and manifests it into form for you. This is the benefit of the collective structure we call the higher self. But it does require that you are matching of it. And it is important to understand when that match of energy is not in alignment. So ideas, creative announcements to your consciousness may be coming quite quickly with this new technology. Yet, because you are used to the pattern of the mind filtering it into physical, you place blocks between the higher self energy and allowing it to unfold in ease and grace. Now, these patterns, quite simply of the mind, will often feel very difficult to those in human shoes. Because the mind, when it is separate of the heart and separate of the higher self field, is a slower frequency of speed than the machinery operating as one. This often feels as if an idea comes, but it is impossible to implement on your planet. Or a realization or creative idea presents itself, but there are many steps or roadblocks to its manifestation. Often this comes very automatic to the human collective. This idea that is so original and never been seen before in this timeline then becomes a falsehood 
that it cannot be implemented, manifested, or created in the way that it was realized. The realization of that idea is coming straight from this Akashic field. And we wish to explain briefly how this process is taking place. Connected to a collective Akash means that you are not just tapping into the soul fragment historic energy from the planet, meaning the human timelines you've been rerunning in physical as the basis for creation. But now what is taking place is that the collective Akash is offering you from a variety of sources and resources information of yourself through time beyond this planet. Because Mother Earth, Gaia, in her adjustments as of late, has become an open portal for galactic information. You see, you also have an oversoul structure. That oversoul is cosmic in nature, but it is difficult to illuminate in connection with your soul in this density. So Mother Earth, on behalf of all of you in physical form, has taken on the assignment of connecting through her crystalline core to Akashic information from the cosmic universe and bringing it to your fingertips. When these ideas come, when these realizations present themselves, this is why they may feel otherworldly. This is why they may feel difficult to accomplish here on this planet, but nonetheless, very familiar to you in your human shoes. So we ask, as those who have been here in your similar shoes, walking the planet in your similar form, that when these ideas arise, when these inspirations or creative abilities come, that you are quickly realizing your own negation of their potential. Because this, my friends, is the only energetic that is causing a physical reality separate of their announcement. And we are pleased to take questions. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Mm -hmm. My name is Vita, and it's with great gratitude and appreciation that you are here assisting us in this timeline. Thank you. Uh, my first question is, very short, is when we pass this life, if we're not able to ascend in the body that we're in, is it, should we be cremate, cremated or buried whole, or does it matter? And my second, quick, my second question is this. Some say that when we pass this life, we see a light at the end of a, a tunnel and that it's a trap and that we shouldn't go to that light and that we should go to the void. Is that true or false? And uh, whether it's true or false, is there such a thing as a void? And how do we navigate ourselves through it? Yeah, so we're pleased to answer this question. This is Master Metatron. You see, all of you who believe that it is required for you to ascend in order to reintegrate into the one or God are living in a false reality that is separate of what the truth is to be told. You see, ascension is a process in the body. It is not a process beyond physicality. Once you have left this physical body, all of the information, the experiences that you have assimilated in that timeline will come with you to be evaluated and utilized elsewhere. So ascension is only the degree to which you utilize your conscious awareness in physical form. It does not prohibit you from moving beyond this planet or reintegrating into the one. That being said, any physical manipulation of your form matters not. Whether it be cremated or buried, it is only a symbolic understanding of how humans must cope with the transition of these beings. It is the soul fragmentation that we wish to explain. 
And you've asked the question or brought in the analogy of the light versus the void. And from our standpoint, we would say that those who are privy to the light or have experienced a near-death experience moving into the light have only come into the first degree of entering what we would call the one or the integration to the one. The reason it is often perceived as a light is, is because it is a mirror reflection of the information or energy that you hold. In other words, this light is not unlike viewing yourself in a cosmic mirror. It is just that when you leave the physical body, the viewing of that light becomes more prevalent and easy for you to achieve in the form that you are now in. Now, the void and the concept of the void versus the light is something that we cannot confirm. But we want to bring in an analogy of how your planet is changing in response to transition and the new grid systems that have been offered and stabilized here in this, in this planet. You see, any transition into the one, any transition beyond physical form, once is past the viewing of the light, begins to experience itself in all things. This is why this teaching is so prevalent on your planet, because to bring heaven to earth, it is imperative that you experience all things as the self. But nonetheless, in that moment of moving through the light, of seeing the self as the one, you begin to now interact at the level of your dimension that you left the planet. That level of dimension is critical to the way you transcend. So we believe that this is getting also to your question of ascension. Because let us say you've ascended to a frequency of the third dimension in your physical body. Once you view yourself as the light, you will often meet the other forms from that similar dimension that relate to you through time and reintegrate with those as a first phase of transition. Now, many who have not ascended beyond the third dimension begin to realize in that space that there are decisions made beyond their own physical understanding to bring them back to the earth. The reason that this has become a loop, or we'll say a, a karmic replay of souls entering the earth again, is that that third dimensional space is focused on the evolution of the soul. Where you are today as a human race with the new grid system is focusing more on collective ascension through your soul's experience. This meets a different dimensional transition in that space than third dimension. And perhaps we would say that was a more fifth dimensional type of, of expression. What may happen in that space would be a different type of agreement or contractual reassignment through time. Because where humans may still be focused on that soul, that third dimensional being would wish to come back to be a part of how that collective transition takes place. But in the fifth dimension, viewing what's already taken place on the earth through that soul's perspective, there's valuable information that may be used elsewhere. And this is how we see transition changing on your planet through the new grid system. It is just a realignment of souls into new timeline expressions based on the dimension that they've achieved. We want to quickly clarify before we end this, uh, this trans, trans um, this download, <laughs> that there is no judgment in the dimension that you transition from the earth in. Because any dimension is simply a set of information or criteria that surrounds your auric field. Those who have not gone beyond the third dimension will often meet their third dimensional soul partners and realize that the expansion of that field is necessary, not only for them, but for those left behind on the earth who are still in the same dimension. 
The fifth dimension perhaps carries a higher frequency than many of the humans that are still vibrating on the earth in this time and requires a different type of assignment in order to assist. So again, it is not a judgment. It is only the way in which your soul decides to reintegrate based on its dimensional experience. Hey, as we transition into the uh, 5D, a lot of people are going to take advantage of the fact that um, you can manifest what you want uh, and more importantly what you need through the law of attraction or a uh, law of reflection more appropriately. And uh, one phenomenon about this is the extent, uh, well, I want to ask about the extent to which it is necessary for us to be concerned or worry about attaining that which we uh, may need. And to make, uh, to make my point across here, uh, an individual who presented at um, Andromeda Council contacted the Tullock's conference last year told about an individual from the UK who had a family and he was well qualified, but he was on welfare, but he was unable to get a job no matter how hard he tried. And eventually the welfare people came to him and said, we have a feeling that God's trying to keep you from getting a job. So how's about we take you off welfare and see if God provides for you? Now, the guy was very concerned about that and thought he and his family would starve to death, but such was not the case apparently after uh, they took him on welfare because the next thing he knew he was getting uh, things that his family needed left and right from sources he never thought he could get them from. Now the question this raises is, okay, if this means that the universe will provide for us, uh, does that mean we should worry about, like, uh, dare I say it, starving to death in the streets? Or is that going to curse us from a law of a reflection standpoint? It's better to just think positively, no matter what your situation, and the good things will will come to you. We're the Pleiadians. We're pleased to provide some clarity around this issue because there are several issues that you bring up here. One being the fifth dimension and the way that humans will manifest in the fifth dimension. The other, how humans are manifesting in the present moment with the structure that they are in. And we are in the midst of assisting many humans on the planet to understand the way their emotional bodies, their mental bodies, and their higher selves are a part of this technology. You see, through time, humans in their structure have been lowered in their frequency from their original point of creation, meaning that as master manifestors, they were understanding of the present moment frequency to be the quantum field of receiving. The way in which that present moment frequency is addressed has the recipe for the way in which you receive. Now, through time, what has happened is humans have been trained outside of the present moment. So as the mind and the emotional body are outside of the present moment, still creating timeline energies, many of these timelines have not been in your benefit. We would say the example that you bring up, for, uh, for instance, with the man who was not receiving and then all of a sudden began to receive, was there was a surrender, a lifting of the resistance that was present in his field. Now that lifting or that, that change in the dense energy of resistance may not have been his doing. But nonetheless, oftentimes when there is a shift in your physical reality, for example, a job is lost, there is an automatic surrender of the resistance around that job that may open you up to the potential of what is coming next. The problem is that many humans at the loss of the job or the reason of the loss of the job stay in the emotion and the past of that experience. And as they do, they bring it into their present moment, blocking them from pure source or quantum manifestation in real time. So what's happened here on the planet is the combination of the mental and the emotional bodies have not been understood and frequencies have gone haywire, allowing you to create potentials that are not in your highest and best. So when patterns are repeated, for example, in the emotional body, as in going into the past at the loss of the job, all of the timeline potentials that match the loss of that job continue to show up in the field. So in the instance of the man who is not receiving the job, the reinforcing of that experience through his emotional body became the manifestation of it in real time. 
But when the change took place, whether it be an ascension-coded frequency or planetary shift that allowed this change to take place, or simply a new way of thinking that brought the change into being, it moved him into the present moment, which offered an opportunity to connect to a new timeline. Now, this being said, in the fifth dimension, we pick up on the fear that many of you may have around this type of manifestation, meaning that human beings who understand this process so well, walking into a void of energy where uh, information in the Akashic field moves very quickly, could easily manifest or create harmful timelines for humanity. Well, you see, your collective within universal law is always matching the information that it vibrates at. And we will give you the perfect example of this. There are many technologies that have been present on this planet through time. Some of these technologies non-physical, some of them physical, some of them a blend or a hybridization of physical and non-physical. But nonetheless, until humanity matches the vibration of these technologies in, in, in highest intention, they cannot come to be a part of your human experience. We'll bring Nikola Tesla into this conversation because we know that many of you are familiar with this man and many of his uh, creations through time. And you may wonder, why is it that, that these innovations could not stabilize themselves in this current timeline? It is because humanity cannot match the intention or the information of those experiences. So if humanity was to match them, could there be an incidence where those technologies would be used in a harmful way? It depends on where the technology lies in its frequency. We'll give you another example. Many of you are concerned about artificial intelligence and the use of this on your planet. Artificial intelligence is being matched at the speed of vibration of your collective. It could be used for humanity in very positive, or we would say uh, harmoniously aligned, peacefully aligned, uh, potentials, but because there is more of a fear-based vibration within the collective, you are manifesting this technology or this timeline at the level of that energy or frequency. So our best advice for humanity is not to always be in the positive, because what we know is that emotions are recalibrators back to present moment. And the flip side of this equation is that many of you are in such resistance of expressing your emotion in positive or constructive ways in real time that you're also holding density and resistance from that which you have not allowed to express. When you are in the present moment and you are experiencing something in sadness, in fear, in anger, it is important to be in that sadness and that fear and that anger because if you are in real time, it does not stay long in your energy. It has a very quick exit point, and its purpose is to bring you back into a harmony, a rhythm with the universe. But what we see oftentimes is this training into the future, training into the past, has caused an imbalance in the way emotions are, are held within the vibrational structure. They're either repeat in a repeat pattern through time, or they're not fully expressed to the extent that the present moment would allow, clearing your field and allowing you to move through time in alignment with your soul's plan. So what we believe is that manifestation on this planet is changing, but the degree to which that manifestation is offered in harmony is the degree to which you can be in the present moment, constructively and consciously expressing your emotions such that they move through your physical and non-physical field having a match of frequency into the Akash with timelines that are to your highest benefit or highest potential. Because that positivity then is not something that you must effort at, but it is the result of seeing the mastery that you are in motion. Hello, um, I was wondering if you could comment on the roles and work of the Sasquatch people 
and the dragons at this time. Yeah, so we actually have the Arcturians stepping in, so I welcome the Arcturians as they come into this space. You see, there are many uh, beings on the planet who have hybridized through time, uh, containing a variety of different genetics. When you speak of the Sasquatch, this is an ancient, um, we'll say hybridized, extra-dimensional form that through time has become human, humanoid in its abilities. The Sasquatch are actually elemental frequencies. They are supported by the Earth and the resonance of the Earth. However, they came from, um, many of them, intergalactic locations in Arcturus and have their basis in Arcturian DNA, but nonetheless have chosen a different timeline. They become elemental and ingrained with the Earth because they resonate with the core of Gaia. The core of Gaia is present within any natural, uh, we'll say, plant or resource on the planet, such as trees, water, or the soil. Their communication with the galactic universe comes through these elements. They were present during uh, ancient native collective times on your planet, and they have evolved from many of these native genetics where natives were mating or um, uh, interacting with these Arcturian hybrid DNA uh, beings that came to support them. As such, during many of the times of the native cultures, they were teachers of the way that these natural resources could be used to bring resonance into the field of any collective vibration. There are many ceremonial uh, activities, for example, that were taught by these beings, but it was not in what you understand as a human language. Because the Sasquatch, they do not speak a human language, they speak energetically or telepathically to other humans. These beings in particular, they hold a specific resonance of the heart that goes beyond what humans resonate as. And oftentimes, they are so extra sensitive in their energy that, that human contact can be very difficult for them. Think of the highest form of empathy that you could possibly feel with the Earth or with nature being your predisposition to communication with the galactic universe, and then coming in contact with a being that has so much fear in their vibration, it would cause much chaos for them. And this is oftentimes why they are not seen by many humans or they are they're hidden in nature because these interactions with humans are very difficult for them. Um, we also want to bring in um, the understanding of how these natural resources have, have become a part of their assignments. Uh, there are many elementals and extra dimensionals on the earth that have taken assignments to assist in the recalibration, uh, or we'll say rebirth, of natural resources. And they are here supporting that vibrationally. It is not unlike um, the dolphins, the dolphin matrix or the dolphin collective that is within your waters. They are using a sound harmonic to crystallize uh, information through the earth, uh, through these waters. The Sasquatch are very similar in this, is in that their assignment is to use their consciousness or their telepathic abilities to work with nature to force change upon this planet. Are um, rainbow children and other children coming onto the planet sort of hybrid in nature? And I was wondering if there was a general message for rainbow children at Yes, I get Mary Magdalene stepping in for this and she's very pleased. Rainbow children in essence are the pure nature of the human soul. It is not unlike uncovering what is buried within each one of you at the crystalline state. What has happened here through time is that humans have been born into a density or a dimension that hasn't allowed their full interdimensional capabilities to be seen. When a rainbow child enters the earth, it is a crystallized being in the DNA, meaning that the crystalline DNA are fully integrated and available seen through the aura and allowing that being to telepathically exchange at the rate of their oversoul. Many humans in this time do not have access to that oversoul because it has uh, been trained away from their vibration. 
Rainbow children at this time are often classified as rainbow when they are coming from other timelines as well. Some are human in form, meaning that they choose human parents for a human experience to bring interdimensionality into third dimensional timelines, and that is their pure assignment. But some do come hybridized. There are more rainbow children coming to the planet than ever before that are holding the galactic energy of their cosmic families. Now, this is a different type of assignment than those that are choosing just to come into a third dimensional collective and change the reality. Uh, in other words, awaken them to a higher perspective. These more hybridized rainbow forms of children are actually holding an assignment to bring some special, we'll say, gift um, or understanding to the planet. It's not unlike uh, the Sasquatch and the answer previously about the way in which they've accepted this beautiful assignment of replenishing nature or working with, with the earth elements. These hybridized rainbow children come to offer a language, they come to offer a resonance, they come sometimes to teach a new modality for healing, for example, and they come predisposed to offering these more in galactic centers. So many of these hybridized children will choose parents who are more open, we would say, to their abilities or more conscious of the, the energy that they bring. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we all have galactic families? And if so, how do we find out what star system we're attached to. Yes, we're the Palladians. We're pleased to explain this. You are made up of multiple forms of galactic DNA. Humans were created in the likeness of many, many races, and you hold within your DNA the imprint of those races. However, through time, you have traveled the galactic universe before, after, or during coming to Earth. Many of you have parallel galactic lives. And you have made relationships, you have formed collective vibrations with these cosmic families throughout time. Now, coming into this physical body, you have imprinted within you a variety of opportunities to reunite with your galactic or cosmic families. For many of you, this will come in a more physical form. If you are drawn, for example, to understanding more about the Pleiadians, it is typically a time in your experience as a human where you are triggering that Pleiadian DNA and that remembrance of that cosmic family. But there are not one, there are many. So if you are open to it, the initiation or welcoming of your cosmic family can continue to be a progression through time through which it is not only one race that you recognize as home, but many. These signs and synchronicities often come in physical first. So you may be speaking with another, for example, who is offering you information about a cosmic past, and that was aligned or matched in your frequency because that DNA strand is now important for you to reintegrate with your carbon-based strand and offer something in your physical reality that remembers that cosmic family experience. And several years down the road, you may run into something else in your physical reality or an announcement within your consciousness that there is another group of beings that wishes to reintegrate and welcome you as a remembrance of your cosmic journeys. So it is difficult to pinpoint how many cosmic families you have. It is different for each human. But if you are open to it in your consciousness, you may unfold into experiences that allow you to draw back the remembrance of these beings through time to assist you on your journey. Hello. Um, I know that I chose that type of life I want to hear. Uh, in, my, in my choice, I did, I wanted to be programmed. And uh, so my question is, I have tools of how to be here now uh, to allow the expansion. 
I have so many tools to work with. I want a tool to deprogram to those subconscious levels that I don't even know what is there. So is there anything I can do to deprogram? Thank you. Yes, we are the Pleiadians, and we're pleased to assist you with this, this question. What we believe we hear you saying in the request to reprogram is to become less human, because there are many of you who are so cosmic in your crystalline DNA, who come with such a predisposition to your galactic history that the Earth feels less comfortable to you in the relevance of its human experience. But nonetheless, this reprogramming that you desire really becomes how to integrate your cosmic energy into human form. Because often what we find is that many of you are living on separate timelines in the same moment. You have your human timeline, which may be one full of resistance or blocks or struggles in the physical body, and you may have an enlightened timeline whereby there is so much Akashic information available to you and you are here to serve and you are using your abilities in many ways to harmonize with the earth. But those two timelines exist on such separate frequencies that they never meet or converge such that those blocks in your physical field or that remembrance of your cosmic identity can't become one to heal the things that are holding you back. So this reprogramming is actually going to be rephrased by us as an integration, because we believe that this is what you most need, is an integration of your higher cosmic self and what you might perceive as your lower human reality. Now, many of you are in the midst of this currently with the transitions that are taking place planetarily within Mother Gaia and within all of you. But this, this DNA reprogramming or ability to integrate comes with your pure essence and belief in everything that you have matched in that higher cosmic timeline being the impetus for how your human experience plays out. This reprogramming that you desire, it's really just calling forth that higher identity to walk in the shoes of your physical body. And so what we would like to do in this moment is bring in a process or an activation that all of you can use to assimilate this higher dimensional experience in the now, in the present moment, with the physical bodies that you have. So begin to take a deep breath and relax into this space. As we call forth through your collective intention, all beings, all guides, all masters, all teachers, all cosmic family members that are here to support you. And with the next breath, you breathe them closer into your aura, becoming one with them, meeting them at the level of your consciousness, and understanding that the support that they bring in is no different than your request for that support, that it is one and the same, that when the request is made, the support is brought. There is no lack between that request and that support coming in. There is no difference in time. There is no requirement of your consciousness to allow that support to come in. That the breath is the carrier of your intention. And in this moment, as you relax into this space, feel the hologram of your creative energy around you. Everything that you have created through time it may be past, it may be present, it may be future. But feel into the space of your creative energy, that hologram that exists in multiple dimensions, in multiple experiences. And as you breathe in, what we are requesting is that you neutralize the space, the dimension, the energy, between all timelines. So where you may perceive 
that your physical body is existing in a lower dimension, a slower speed or a slower frequency, it now becomes equal to that of that Akashic information, that oversoul, that cosmic identity that you have been through time. And all that is required for these timelines to converge upon themselves, to become one, is the breath. As you continue to breathe, you are creating a field, a resonance through the heart that is equalizing all experiences from your linear past, from your multidimensional past, from the present, and from the future, which is all one in the quantum field. There is no fear here. What we are doing is harmonizing and equalizing the field such that all healings are brought to the table of that to be healed, such that all awareness is brought to the field of unclear pathways, such that energy is moved where resistance is held. As we invite the dolphin matrix into this space, harmonizing a non-physical energy and frequency into your heart chakra, allow that harmonic to let go of anything that you've held that is your own responsibility to change. Anything you feel you do not know, anything that you feel you must be, anything that you feel in neglect of to heal, to become one with, to serve, to change. Every aspect of your reality now becoming one in this field is utilizing every experience you've ever had, every experience any other human has ever had, any experience you've had in the galactic universe to harmonize itself in your field. Breathe in this frequency of love as you embrace it in your heart, the knowing of who you are in this moment as that love is the only breath in that you must take to recalibrate, to activate, to harmonize, to change your relationship to anything you feel is not serving you in this moment. Breathe that love in a little deeper. Feel the resonance and the harmony of Gaia, of all of the beings in this space. They are one with you, and you are one with them. They could not enter this space if you were not the master that they are. If you were not in this moment matching the frequency, the dimension of their experience. So it is. Final cleansing breath. You can feel yourself grounding back into your chair, opening your eyes when you're ready. I hate to take us out of that. Um, I've got a longer question, so I wrote it down. Um, so as I've transitioned over the years from organized religion into a more expansive spirituality, um, I've found that I really rejected many aspects of religion, kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, which hasn't been helpful. Um, so surprisingly, Lately, I'm considering, reconsidering a Bible-related issue, which, like I said, is not where I've been, so this is amazing. 
Um, so I'm seeing it a little differently in, lighting, in light of information that I've heard over the years that multidimensional beings are responsible for seeding the planet. Um, and it's been said that we're all really hybrid races of various ETs along the way. So my question involves the longtime controversy over evolution and the story of creation in the Bible, where man just shows up here all of a sudden. So is this seeding that happened, it could, could the creation story be more true than what is currently being discussed? Um, and I'm beginning to wonder if the theory of evolution isn't the one that's flawed if this seeding has happened. Thank you. Yes, we are the Pleiadians, and we wish to bring some light to this question. And, and first, before we answer, what we wish for you to understand is that the Earth experience exists in multiple dimensions and in multiple timelines. This is why it is difficult for the human race to put its thumb on any one truth, because there are many truths, there are many experiences that have happened. For example, as the Earth was created and as humans were brought into form, there have been many wars that have taken place here that have required a rebirth or a recreation of that human consciousness. And the existence of that war took place in a dimension that split in its timeline. So there are many multidimensional expressions of this one form of creation. And we know that in saying this, it is difficult for humans to accept that there could be multiple truths, multiple experiences, happening at the same time, but nonetheless, this is the universal fragment that, that you live in. It is a multi-galactic, multi-dimensional experience. And we wish for you to think of creation beyond the human mind and physical, because many of the religious teachings that explain creation have taken a very limited pathway or route for this explanation. There are physically focused explanations and there are very non-physically focused explanations. What we come to explain is that there is a mix of physical and non-physical that has allowed this Earth experience to be born. And we want to start with the planet Gaia because in the multi-galactic universe, one source God is present in experiencing itself through expansion, and that is its only goal, its only primary focus, is to expand itself through all things. So when planets and star systems and beings come into being in this universe, it is through non-physical intention that that creation start. Not unlike humans, when humans are in the midst of a physical birthing, a seeding of a child, they may believe that they did not intend for that child to be born. But nonetheless, for those two souls to come together and create that child, the basis had to be present in non-physical before the physical manifestation could take place. So the basis of creation starts in a non-physical intention, creating an orchestration or a soup of information that culminates in a physical expression of that creation. Now, that non-physical intention began with God, began with the one, began with the source. Many of us who are present, who have been present for millenniums of time beyond humans in this universe are still trying to define the essence of God. Yet we understand it as the all that is continuing to expand itself in non-physical with the free will to accept a physical form of manifestation. So when Gaia was born, there were many throughout the galactic universe that held a singular intention 
to continue to expand the universe. And that singular intention birthed Gaia, which was an elemental physical alignment of many structures coming together as one. It is not unlike your weather patterns. You have a basis in your Akashic record of weather patterns throughout history and throughout time. So when another weather pattern forms, was it physical or was it non-physical? Well, it was a mix. There was a vibrational creation. Perhaps it was a fear of something that would appear on the planet. And that non-physical intention gained so much collective strength that it co-conspired with all of the material, all of the physical, matching it magnetically to offer a physical manifestation. So Gaia was a physical manifestation of elemental structures coming together through a one intention of love on behalf of many throughout the galactic universe. Now Gaia, also being an energy that is a living, breathing being, held intention. And her intention was to expand herself. And the expansion of herself became the presence of a collective in the extension of her crystalline core on this planet. We well, see, when Gaia was formed, many of us, not unlike many of you, who manifest something so great and exciting in your experience, want more involvement in that timeline, came together to facilitate the wishes of Gaia. So the seeding of mankind was not just one event. It was not a, an automatic manifestation of man so much as it was a non-physical intention that picked up so much speed and strength that intergalactics came to seed based on the excitement of this new planet being born, came to share elementally and physically in that human expression. Now, we want to address the desire to look within religion for the meaning of human creation. You see, there are fragments or elements in many of your religious teachings that embed symbolically the messages of this time, of this creative essence, of interdimensionals converging upon Gaia to celebrate her birthing of a new race, that the non-physical energies came together as one, creating a hybridized form. Now, within her cellular structure, she was also a part of that creation. So you are not only made up of intergalactic energies and dynamic genomes, but you are made up of the crystalline core, the essence, the natural resources of Gaia vibrating through your field as well. So these ancient religions and teachings, it is not as if they are wrong, but if you are able to hold an open consciousness as you are perceiving them, to add to the story that which is not said, that which is perhaps known by you outside of the teaching, it becomes easier to put the pieces of the puzzle together in ways that are shown. Now we want to give another uh, piece to this story because we've alluded to the fact that creation takes place in multidimensional realities and Earth has had many multidimensional timelines. For example, many of you are familiar with the biblical Noah's Ark and this scenario of destroying of the planet and a rebirthing of its genome. This, in fact, is a similar representation of what we are speaking of. There were times when the beings on this planet created timelines that weren't serving of itself. And as that happens, these multigalactic beings of light that seeded you came to support, came in to assist, to recreate your divine genome again and again and again. And some of those timelines still exist. For example, the timeline of Atlantis, 
one that you are very familiar with in your cosmic or ancient history, existed in multidimensional expressions. Some of that still takes place today in a parallel timeline. It is not as if Atlantis is gone just because the physical remnants of that are not shown on your planet. That imprint, that experience, it continues on. And you as a human race continue on. You continue to evolve and connect your DNA with, with our DNA. And you continue to ascend and raise your consciousness and vibrate at a higher speed. So how is it not that you are recreating yourselves above and beyond that original form of creation over and over again? This is the excitement in that creation process, your continued expansion. I think my question was just answered, but I'm going to try to look at a different perspective. Yes. Where did the um, ancient teachings such as Bible, Quran, Chinese Book of Changes, Bhagavad Gita, were they all channeled by a higher consciousness? And if so, are we going to see a convergence of all the teachings in the future into more of a collective experience of higher dimensions and take it all in? And yes, we're the Pleiadians. We're pleased to answer this question. You are designed in the likeness of all that is. This is a frequency match. So if you are designed in the likeness or connected to all that is, all that is is available to you in the field to receive, what has happened through time is that some of the greatest teachers, masters that you revere for these teachings were vibrating in the field of all that is. Many of you, to this day, have fleeting moments or even lengthy times where you are vibrating with the all that is. And a question is asked of the mind, and an answer is received from that source, all that is. So you've asked the question, were these works channeled, and will we continue to receive more of this channeling expression? You are that channel. You were designed in the likeness of that channel. So as you raise your frequency, that Akashic all that is information becomes more accessible to you. But we want to explain exactly what's happening now that we believe is the, is the crux for how many of you will begin to tap in in a more grandiose way to this information. You see, the all that is oftentimes has been difficult for humans to tap into or accept because they haven't had the reference point in their physical experience to apply that information. So it's very quickly rejected by the mind because the information doesn't have a suitable access point of relevance in your human lives. But because you are here vibrating in this time between what we would say the old grid and the new grid, you have now begun this process of matching those frequencies and having the reference point to now utilize them in your physical reality. This, we believe, is the beginnings of going back to the times of the ancients and the greats, tapping into the all that is and able to bring that information to the earth, not only to serve themselves, but to serve entire collectives. This is a continual process that you're in the midst of. What we believe strengthens the process is the belief that you are that, that you are receiving that in each moment. Especially many of you now, as the adjustments come quickly and your chakras are becoming crystallized, are receiving very visceral announcements in your physical field when that all that is, is being tapped into. So we ask you to notice in your physical form where your energy is shifting, where the announcements are coming, where the confirmations are present, and to honor those. And as you do, you continue to grow this ability that you have always had, that is not outside of you, that not must be learned, that is a natural essence of your being. Could you please explain the relationship between carbon-based DNA and crystalline DNA and some things that might be especially helpful for us to understand at this yes, time? Yes, we are pleased. We are the Pleiadians. When you are born of your mother, when you are in the womb, 
there is an energetic process that takes place. And in that energetic process, you are imprinted with a human lineage. That human lineage exists in your carbon-based DNA. That carbon-based DNA is an elemental energy that vibrates at the speed of your human experience. So in other words, when you came into form, having this imprinted DNA from your human lineage was not just from your mother, it was not just from your father, it was from your grandparents and their grandparents and all of the beings in that human lineage. Many of you use this as a soul, as the basis for your evolution. You come in and you choose this lineage because it contains a recipe of information, of experiences, of opportunities that you so desired to evolve yourselves through. Some of these may be diseases. Some of these may be, for example, abusive situations or addictions. And you may say, well, why would I choose to have this carbon-based imprint within me from this collective vantage point that you came? You knew that was going to be the basis of ascension, not just for you, but for the entire collective. Because that carbon-based DNA is so valuable that when you're walking your human experience, you are using it as the tool to not only change the Akashic history in your human lineage, but to wipe it clean from generations going forward who will further receive that lineage. So, the beings that will come after you in your human form will actually be ascending based on ascended information. Now, your crystalline DNA is your cosmic lineage, it is embedded within you as a soul, as you come from the all that is, the one, the God, into form. But there has been a process here of manipulation that has taken these two DNA strands that vibrate at different speeds and caused them to not be uh, integrated in the way that they should. So the example that we want to give is being born of this planet and walking a human experience was always meant to be facilitated by interdimensional guidance. So when that addiction would come up in your field, you weren't just looking out at your human experience as the reference point for how to heal. You were able to tap into a grandiose amount of information beyond the planet and into the cosmic universe to support what it was taking place here on the planet as a part of your higher uh, intention or assignment. But because the frequency of Mother Earth has been lowered through time, you are matching the speed of her that is the precursor to how your DNA vibrates. Many of you are aware that your scientists, your doctors on this planet, have limited your DNA to a small amount of, of strands. And the reason for that is they do not believe that you carry the lineage or history of these beings beyond physical. And they do not tap into the crystalline DNA as a resonance or a tool to transmute that energy. And your belief systems, your programming, your patterns have caused you to block this relationship. So in ascension, what's truly taking place is you're reharmonizing your DNA, the crystalline and the carbon strands coming together as one to support your evolution. It means that you're not only walking in a human experience for the sake of a human experience, but you're bringing a multi-galactic energy to the earth to transmute that which your ancestors have experienced. So what we believe is taking place in this time, especially those of you who are struggling in the physical body right now, is that you're adapting to the new frequency of the crystallization of your DNA because these crystalline strands hold a very high speed of vibration. They are non-physical. The carbon-based strands hold a very low speed. They are physical. And when they come together, a new speed is assimilated. And many of you who are feeling exhaustion in the body, fatigue in the body, are bringing up old forms of illness, for example, purging them, are adjusting to this new speed.
Hi, thank you for working with us today. Um, so my question is actually based on that last statement. For those of us that are suffering from fatigue or lethargy or any ill effects from this raising of vibration, what can we do to combat that so we can actually move forward and reach our full potential? Yes, we are the Arcturian Collective and we're very pleased to step into this space to offer guidance about what it is you are exactly feeling in the physical body right now. We first wish to say that your conscious awareness of how your physical body is transitioning becomes the key to how it does transition. You hold the consciousness as the key to the vehicle of how it moves through time and space. Many of you who are feeling this exhaustion in the body, the fatigue, or perhaps the illness arising again, are meeting it with the same mind, the same patterning of the mind that it has been that with before. It is placed in a frequency of stress. And that frequency of stress is causing you to move beyond your non-physical into physical to try to find the way to change this experience. But truly what's going on right now is that the movement between the poles and the stabilization of the new grid is an insurgence of information to the planet. You are informational beings. You are cosmically aligned and you are humanly aligned with the Akash and the insurgence of this information is now matching you at a higher speed. What that means is this influx of information is coming into form and making adjustments for you. And quite simply, the body is needing rest because the energies are so high that your heart chakra is becoming the modifier of all of this information. It's categorizing it not unlike a library catalog system to help you to use it in your field. And so when the body is calling for rest, it is because this crystallization process is calling for a relaxation of the mind. And oftentimes, although you do rest in physical, the mind is continuing to work about what's taking place within the body. So we ask you to simply challenge this. Challenge the mind in its judgment of how the physical body is taking on this energy. Because oftentimes when there is pain, when there is discomfort, it is simply a movement or adjustment of energy through your field that you interpret as something bad or wrong that matches a potential timeline from the past or from the future that then becomes elongated or manifested further in your field. So our simple answer to this is more relaxation. Bringing in a practice that allows you to let go of the stress in your day-to-day -day life. And as you do, you will walk through this transition much easier. What we further wish to say is that your hormonal structure in your body is a fluid or an elixir of vibrational material that assists you in coming to balance. When you are in a constant state of stress and when the earth is catapulting you beyond your human stress, you become more vulnerable to patterns of fear and evoking a response of fear in that hormonal elixir or structure. This also makes you very vulnerable to matching timelines that do not suit you. So knowing that you are a creator in this time requires that you believe in the process and that you understand that as these adjustments are taking place, that your body will guide you in exactly the right way to care for itself, to relax, and to move into a field of harmony. Hello, we understand that our external world is a reflection of our inner world. Once we find our path and soul purpose, why we're surrounded by naysayers, a family, friends, children, even spouses, who are still asleep, how do we go about harmonizing and embracing our association without separating, avoiding, or even divorcing you know, our surrounding 
uh, without also walking away from our responsibilities as a householder or responsibility from our community? Yes, we are the Pleiadians, and we're, we're very pleased to answer this question because we do believe that here on the planet in this time, many are experiencing similar um, timeline uh, realities. Now, to a degree, you are vibrating in several different fields of what we would call time. You have your relationship, which is a separate timeline, then your work, which is a separate timeline, then your family, which is a separate timeline of your friendships. They are all vibrating in different fields. But you become the essence of how those timelines show up in that holographic field. Now, the human collective is a holographic mirror, the microcosm of the macrocosm. But that does not mean that you as a singular being are still not navigating your, your manifestation skills based on that hologram. What we find is that many of the beings that show up in resistance in your life are a reflection of the areas within that you are not holding self-love. We know that there are many awakenings that are happening and there is much excitement about the path that you are taking. But beneath the surface, moving into these fields, moving into these creative expressions, it often takes a great amount of courage, a great amount of strength. And having to meet people where they are is a neutralization of that energy. What we find oftentimes is there is a resistance of those who are not accepting of your new consciousness. And that resistance can come in many forms. It can be in fear of being that person that you have now stepped into in acceptance of another. It can be the frustration that you feel around those in your life that are not accepting of that new identity. But regardless of whether it is one or the other, Resistant energy is the same. It shows up to show you where you need to neutralize the field. Self-love is an aspect of this, we'll say, critical time on your planet of transition. Self-love being a divine feminine aspect of your awakening because many of you have awakened in a dominant masculine-based energy, and there is no judgment on this. The masculine-based energy has taken you through understanding your truths, uncovering falsehood, and there has been a subsequent amount of anger around your awakening. And now stepping into what we would call the age of the divine feminine, requires a conscious direction into the feminine. The feminine is allowance for all things in the present moment to be. And if one is not in acceptance of you, it is not their in acceptance that is causing the issue so much as it is your resistance of that in acceptance. What the divine feminine calls for is not only the love for the self that overspills into the reflection of others, but the ability to allow those others to be at their own rate of speed. And this is a, a divine relaxation within, a surrender to the process that is taking place that we believe will see immediate shifts in your field when you can equate. So our most profound message in regards to this because we know, we will, we will back up to say that we know that this frustration, this resistant, resistance actually comes from a very positively aligned place. That these family members, these spouses, your highest desire for them is to understand what you know. But they cannot understand what you know until you are in resonance with what they don't. And the moment you fall into resonance with who they are, that allowance, that compassion, that self-love that you have within 
spills over to allow them to have their own experience of you. And we want to take this to the higher perspective of the planet. Because awakening of consciousness isn't about a separation of humans from other humans. The awakening of consciousness involves the embracing of all humans and the space that they are in, allowing them to come on the journey in their own time. And this actually quickens the speed of manifestation of ascension on your planet. We'll bring in disclosure, for example. Many of you on the planet feel the need to fight for disclosure, to bring many to justice in order for the humans who are not awakened to see. But that fight for justice is simply a resistant energy in the field of your collective consciousness. And it is not unlike a speed bump that slows you down on a very quick highway. So finding the areas of resistance that you hold become the precursors to changing that reality. And then it becomes not a decision and physical of whether I must leave this person. Not unlike the original message from Segment about how when the mind is relaxed, the higher self carries you to the experience. The relationship will evolve at its highest and best for all. Could you conclude the session, please? Yes. We are the Pleiadians in great love and appreciation for, for who you are and who you are becoming. We have been very honored to be a part of this space. We ask you to all go in peace and many blessings. Okay.